Hello, good morning, and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me inside a parking garage at our hotel in San Jose, California. I'm driving the Rivian R1T uh, this week. I drove it out from Colorado. We went to LA. I towed the Nissan Leaf out there. I dropped it off with our friends Patrick and Liv from Mach E Vlog. That's gonna get a new onboard charger. And I probably just keep that car in the LA area because I'm there so often, it'd be nice to have a car to cruise around in. So I expect the Leaf to kind of just live in California for the next months, years, decades, I'm not sure. Um, but I came up here to San Jose with the Rivian. The trailers dropped off uh, down the street. It didn't fit in the parking garage uh, because it's collection day. We are buying a brand new electric vehicle to share with you. And I think it's a really cool piece. It's unbelievably rare, uh, well under 150 ever made in total. Uh, this one has 50 miles on it. Window sticker still in there. It's truly a machine of high quality and uh, I think you guys are going to be thrilled when you see what it is. Some of you longtime viewers or those that watch the channel often already know what it is because I've hinted about us getting this car and it's actually already been on our channel in two separate videos. But today it's collection day. I'm so excited to share my new electric vehicle with you and um, of course I'm going to let you know how much I paid for it. Alyssa, should I tell them? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you how much I paid for this. It will blow your mind. So uh, let's get into it. So the Rivian R1T is out here in California at the moment. And uh, I debated putting this video on my personal channel. It's just called Kyle Connor. And that's typically where I do updates on my cars, the ones that I have that, you know, I keep around to share with you guys. And, um, but this car that we're buying today has already been on the channel. It's got a little bit of a story. It's not like a car that's gonna do huge views or anything like that. It's kind of a weird specialty piece, but uh, one of those, like I'm a car enthusiast. I love weird cars, underappreciated cars. And this will be the cheapest vehicle I have ever purchased by a long shot and probably will ever purchase. I'll tell you how much I'm paying for it in a bit. But the, we brought the Rivian out here and you can see we have the Overland Rough Racks on the top and the back. We are starting the off-road build. So this was really step one and uh, just looking awesome. We'll have a full in-depth video on the installation process, how that all went. But I know a lot of you guys asked in the comments, what the heck's on the roof of your truck? And well, Overland Rough Racks on the Rivian. So let's load up and get this new electric car. Can't wait to share with you the whole story. We are pulling out of the underground parking garage right now here in San Jose, and we are heading to Del Grande Dealer Group, DGDG. And um, some of you guys know what this car is. I'll save the telling you all about the car until we get there, because for those of you who haven't watched the previous videos, I think you're gonna be so freaking pumped up about this thing as much as I am. So looks like this guy's letting us go ahead. Take a look at this ramp getting out of here. This is legit. This would make a great like Scoots Hill Climb Challenge video. Just full torque up the hill. Um, Rivian, by the way, have been amazing and have totally fixed all my drivetrain clunks on this truck. It's just so cool. The Overland Rough Racks really completes the top look. We'll have new wheels, new tires coming, whole bunch of off-road modifications in the works and uh, can't wait to kit this thing out for some adventures. But today's video is not about the Rivian and we'll have other dedicated videos on what we're doing with this truck. It's all about the new electric vehicle that we are purchasing. And I cannot believe we found a brand new unsold one still left on the lot. And it's got one hell of a story to tell. So off to Starbucks, off to DGDG. Let's go collect the new EV. Guys, we are now turning into DGDG. Welcome here to an awesome dealer group in San Jose. And look to your right, there it is. <laughs> they even put a bow on it. That is our new, brand new Coda Electric. And um, I'll tell you all about it. I'll tell you about the whole story, uh, but uh, we're buying it for $1. <laughs> yes, they're basically giving us the Coda Electric. Um, we're going to get it uh, kind of nice and looking great. It'll go to out-of-spec detailing. 
Um, I'll tell you the story. It sat for 10 years, completely forgotten about. But first, what we need to do is we're going to charge up the Rivian. I left the trailer here last night. So they have a DC fast charger just on the back side of the uh, Chevy store over here. So we'll throw it on the fast charger, top it up to, I don't know, I keep, I full charged this thing twice recently. So I think what I'm going to do is do a probably 95% charge. We'll just save the top end just slightly. And it's just a little 50 kilowatt unit, so shouldn't stress anything too much. We'll go throw it on the fast charger over here, and then uh, yeah, I'll take you on a tour of the Coda Electric. We'll see Nick, who you saw in the previous videos when we first found this vehicle, and uh, it should be great. By the way, look at how many ID4s that are here. This is what happens when Tesla lowers the price of the Model Y. A little bit of off-roading this way, up and over and then over to the DC charger. I know my way around this dealership lot after spending some time here when we uh, first saw the Coda. So uh, let's plug it into their tritium unit. We'll be good to go. And here we are pulling up to their DC fast charger right here on the left, just getting us out of traffic as much as possible. So boom, and uh, let's juice it up. I can't tell you how to authenticate it because it's not for public use. Here we are charging on the tritium unit. These things rock and uh, we are plugged up. Let's see, will it communicate? Will it charge? It's thinking, the truck's talking to the charger. Dun, 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 dun. There we go, we are juicing. And you can see the scale going up. Peg it, there we go. 50 kilowatts maxed out. So we'll just let this sit here dead silent. No noise on this thing, by the way. Uh, I really like these new tritium units. Uh, so <laughs> there we go. We'll let it charge up. It says it'll be done in about two hours. Guys, if you had seen the previous videos about our Kona Electric, you'll remember Nick. Nick is uh, a guru here at DGDG. And uh, really, I mean, you're the reason this whole thing happened. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> yeah I've been here for seven years, uh, you know, working at DGDG. And uh, this car has been in a back parking lot the entire time. Um, yeah. I think it's moved a couple of feet in that time. But, uh, but yeah, I figured I, we could find a, a good home for it, and, and we did. Well, the story was so funny because it's been here for 10 years. You yep. were original uh, Coda Electric yep. new car retailer. You had a store, you had employees, yep. and that was Coda of Silicon Valley. Yep. And was that actually here? Uh, it was on Stevens Creek, so it's uh, about 20 minutes from here. Okay. That's our other auto mall. Yeah, not that uh, far away. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that dealership, uh, you know, they sold so many of the 117 of these that were actually sold. And then Coda went bankrupt. And so this car, we nobody really knows the story of it, but it's still here. It was never sold. It was never registered. There's no title. Like, right, there's very... no record of it. So... It's crazy so how this all are. happened. So yeah. you called me and you're like, hey, we found this Coda Electric on our lot. Yep. <laughs> like, do, I, do you want to come at least check it out? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I was, it just was amazing because I happened to be down the street filming that in-depth video at ChargePoint at yep. the time. Yep. And I was like, ah, uh, yeah, I'm coming over right now. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. And, and you it's know, like, we all knew it was back there, but yeah. no one thought that it was worth anything. So right. it's just like, it was, was it going to the scrapyard? Like, and I'm like, no, no, no. This is too special. This is like, and no one believed me that anybody would want this thing. And so I'm like, no, 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 I seriously have someone. And then when I'm like, they're coming from Colorado, they really didn't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, not only are they, you know, not here in the Bay Area, but they're actually driving halfway across the country to pick this thing up. <laughs> yeah. Like, it was, uh, it was crazy. So here we are. Yeah, it's, uh, we got a, a nice janky red bow for you. <laughs> yes, I love the uh, red bow. Yeah. Come take a close-up of this. It's like a, a red bow to match the state of the Coda. <laughs> just all rippled, faded, yep. um, just like the car. So I guess a little bit of stuff about the car. It's a 2012, okay. doesn't even say. Uh, yeah, yeah, 2012 okay. Coda right here. 2012 Coda. Uh, this is the nice one. It has the uh, black premium interior. So it's got the $1,495 premium trim package. It's missing a few things, but my friend Robert from Aging Wheels is sending me all the stuff I need to get this back in order. So love that. There's like a weird community of YouTubers who own Codas. And um, like we've all become friends <laughs> through this car. And so, yeah, we're going to get this one like back to factory fresh.
It only had 51 miles on 51 it. 51 miles, yeah. 51 yep. miles. So it's literally a brand new car that was on the lot. It was built here in San Jose. Uh, the body's Chinese. Uh -huh. All the Correct. electronics are Chinese. But it yep. was a San Jose... Uh, I believe so. Yeah, manufactured so. thing. So uh, I guess what we should do is we should uh, go through some paperwork. It's actually Benicia, which is not too far. Okay. Final assembly port. So yeah, there's a bunch of like auto ports there. Yeah. They, um, they, you know, offload ships and then oh, ship okay. all. Most of our cars come from Benicia or somewhere like near there. Like that's the so. local port. So yeah. Um, so um, yeah, I mean, essentially, let's let's buy it. Let's take it for a quick little drive because we've never really driven it. We'll put a yeah. dealer plate on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <no> <laughs> and like, I don't think we should go that far because the tires had been melted into yeah, the yeah. pavement and they, they're ten years old. They held air for a month. So right, they eight. held air for. The <laughs> brakes are sketchy though. So yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, we'll so just we kind of like it's an empty Saturday. Yeah, we can go yeah, around. Yeah. The we'll, yeah. we'll just do nothing too far. When we get it back to Colorado, we'll go through and yep. you know, new tires, new brakes, yep. um, the battery pack. The most incredible part of all of this was when we found this car. You know, we were like, of course it's going to be dead, and the 12 volt was dead. Yeah, we jump started the 12 volt battery, and right after we jump started the 12 volt battery, you were in the car. You turned the, turned key, the key, and it goes up to 30 percent state of charge. Held <laughs> 30% state of charge over 10 years. Yeah. And it, I confirmed everybody who would have touched this car in that period, no one said it moved from that corner in the back parking lot and there's nowhere to charge it. It's got yeah. charge in the battery. But wait, is parking brake on? Oh. Oh. Whoa, it, oh. are you kidding me? Kidding. <laughs> what? what? It drives? Holy oh. crap. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. The thing moves. Dude, what the heck? That's incredible. That is the, the... brakes don't really work. Yeah, I know. I was going to um, say, like, I hope you have an exit plan. It has 50 miles on it. Right. It's so, just amazing. I, yeah. Because the first it. time we saw it, we couldn't even find the keys. Yep, yep. And then some, your lot of dude, like, had them in the back of his desk. <laughs> exactly. And he's just like, yeah, no one ever asked before. No one asked for it. Yeah, it's <laughs> forgotten. So. It's just amazing. And uh, so, yeah, it, I mean, Phantom drain, Rivian take note. Yep. That's how you engineer a car to not have phantom drain. Just amazing. So let's take it for a drive. It's officially the out of spec Coda. And uh, anyone who wants to see it, anyone who wants to drive it, come on over <laughs> once, it's, <laughs> once it's fixed. Uh, I want everyone to enjoy the Coda. It's a weird piece of EV history and I'm yep. glad you've let us, uh, I guess, assume ownership, not pay for it. Cause we're not really paying for it. <laughs> Yep, we're glad uh, it has a second home. So yeah, yep. thank you. Or, actually, it's the first time, right? I mean, I guess you can count this as the first time. But yeah, I think really, lived here long enough. Special owner, so and and someone has definitely lived and probably died inside of it. <laughs> so <laughs> the the interior, you got to watch the old it's videos. Good. It's not good. It's got to go and get fully detailed. But yep. uh, cool. Well, one. let's get a plate. Let's uh, do some paperwork and let's take it for its first ever drive on public streets. Sounds it good. really could be. It could be. It really could be, unless somebody drove it over here from the original dealer, maybe. But right. or they trailered it. We don't know. Yeah. Is it the fifty sure. miles when they did end of line testing, yeah. Yeah. or is it from you guys? No one knows. No one knows. No one but knows. Uh, at least I'll be able to take it for its first drive. Yeah. You join us inside of the Coda Electric now, and what a machine! Uh, I feel like every time I touch something, is it going to break? <laughs> so we have a jump box on the twelve volt. Yep. We are on. And it, look, it just starts right up, gauges go, it says ready. It's like it never even cared. We're at, you know, 40% state of charge, 41% state of charge. Actually, 50 miles 50 on the miles. nose. It said 51 in your video last time, I think, didn't it? Mm, maybe not. I, we'll have to go back. Not. We'll have to go back and look. I think it was 50. I remember everyone was saying 51. Oh, maybe. Maybe I'll I said see. 51 after we drove maybe. it. Maybe, maybe so that's it what it was. I'm like... <laughs> um, let's roll the windows slightly because we will die of whatever yeah, smell whatever. is in here. It's really not bad. It's just yeah. old. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, we'll do a little, a little ozone. Little organic. Yeah, we got to get, uh, you know, this piece needs to get re, I don't know, a lot, a lot of things that need to be done here. But essentially, um, the car has, I mean, it's a brand new factory car yep. um, with, with 50 miles on it. And we'll basically, I mean, I'll let everyone know what our plans are some confusion about this car though the vin is 84 yep but the number here if you take a look up here is number 33 of 500 
Now, that 500 was fairly ambitious because they only built 117. Yep. And we're not sure if this one counts as one of the 117 because we're it was sure never retail yet. sold. Exactly. So I guess it's it could be 118 or it could be number 33 of the, one eight, of the 117. 117. So uh, brake booster's working. We'll rotate it into drive. Nice handbrake for big skids. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, I mean, everything works on this. That was the one thing That's we were crazy. really impressed with. Yeah. Uh, but I guess only the paint has faded. That's the only it's, thing it's sitting in just cosmetic, it seems like. Yeah. Brakes actually feel pretty good. I think we got most of the rust off. Of yeah, we got a lot of the rust off. Can we go out here? Yeah, so you're going to go out, make a right turn. Okay. And then you'll make the first right. It has a UQM motor, which became Dan Foss. And uh, off we go, our first go. ever drive on the streets. <laughs> Public street for <laughs> oh my God. the first time in a decade. That's an oh, horn. No horn. <laughs> Wait, there's, there's like not even a switch for a horn. Oh, there's, yeah, the tires are definitely yeah. flat spot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stiff ride. But the steering's oh. really light. Look at the Coda go. <laughs> All right, we have to do just a quick wide open launch. There we go. This is so, the place to do it. This is where we're going to do a launch. The first ever in the Coda Electric. We're at 40% state of charge on the nose and oh, <laughs> it oh, thought about like, yep. Yeah. It's like, what are you doing? Oh, it's me? actually quick. When you get it up to about 30 miles an hour, <laughs> it, it really boogies. <laughs> wow. What a machine. Amazing. <laughs> so you want to go right here. Oh, oh wait. So that is not functioning. Well, <laughs> Typical kind of things. Yep. Yeah, I think I can adjust this slightly. We'll go right here. Yep. Unless you want to go on the expressway. No, nah, I don't yeah. think. Uh, I don't think it's expressway rated on these tires. <laughs> <laughs> Again, ten years ten old. Years. Literally, when we filled them up, it brought the pavement with it. <laughs> yeah, you can still see it on the tires. <laughs> yeah, too. It's so sketchy. So yeah, always. You know, for all, a lot of you guys who may have collector yeah. cars or old cars. You always want to make sure your tires are not much more than 10 years. I mean, five yeah. years ideally is when, when they start to degrade slightly. Sure. Wow, this thing's quiet. Yeah. It feels nice. There's no weird vibrations other than the tires. Yeah, honestly, there's no rattles, which yeah. is crazy. Alyssa, back seat review. Well, yeah, um, it's uh, quite tight back here. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I will say. And, um, yeah, just kind of afraid of what diseases might be in here. But, um, other than that, you know, great condition. Yes. A lot of this is other than that, the car is fine. Exactly. You know, that could describe most of the car. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and we'll make a right up here at this lake. Yeah. I also love how we're both buckled up, but it yeah. says we're not buckled. Oh, yeah. nice. <laughs> oh, okay. There we go. So little things. Alyssa, it might be doing a backseat buckle. I don't think it has a weight sensor in the back. Maybe. I'd be shocked. That'd be amazing. So the handling is just next level. <laughs> I mean, you really need a racing license <laughs> to drive this thing. Look at it go. The vibration. <laughs> oh, man. It's the fastest it's gone. It probably is the fastest yeah, it's gone yeah. right there, 45. 45. But like, it doesn't seem to care. It handles it really well. Yeah. So, uh, is there a, a station where we can plug this thing in and top uh, it up? Before yeah. Back? Go ahead and park right next to that Fiat. Okay. And we'll just unplug the Fiat. I don't know whose car that is, but it's been there since yesterday. Should I put it where we originally uh, had it? Sure. This is where we originally parked yeah. it. Uh, this will be good. And I'll put it right there. Skirt. Okay. And we'll go into park. Parking pole engaged. What? That was now it has 51 <laughs> miles on it. So the odometer does work. It does work. So we okay. must be wrong. Yeah. Maybe. There's no way it went backwards. I mean, it is a Coda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it has 10,000 miles. <laughs> so if you guys remember from the previous video, we have to do a, a quick pry to open this up. And I'm trying to remember which direction it comes out of. And it might be. Now, I'm fairly certain it's back to front, right, Nick? Yeah, I think so. I think the hinge is on the left. There we go. So we just have to keep a little pry tool in the car at all times. Maybe after working it through, like it'll actually start to pop one day. But um, just to show you guys, this thing has a, 
uh, roughly, I think 30-ish kilowatt hour lithium phosphate battery pack, lithium iron phosphate. So it's LFP, full charge, it, huge cycle life. Amazing how it held a charge. I mean, I guess once the 12 volt died, there was nowhere for the energy to go. Yeah. And so the battery sat perfectly healthy for the last 10 years, like not full, not dead, right where they like to be. So I bet this still has most of its original capacity left in the battery pack. I bet it hasn't lost much at all. And it's still AC charges just fine. Uh, no DC fast charging on this particular one. And um, well, there you go. It's officially our Coda. So what's next? Come on back. You haven't seen the back of it yet. Had these awesome tail lights and everything like this. Again, I've already, the only reason I'm not going super in depth is I've already done two videos telling you everything you need to know about this, which will be linked. So watch part one, part two, part three, the culmination, we're getting it. Uh, but here's what we're gonna do. As soon as we get it back to Colorado, safety stuff first, new tires. Uh, the brakes might actually be fine now that the rust is gone, but we'll just have the car gone over by a mechanic, just double check all the bolts and everything are all good to go. Then of course, we're gonna go through and wash the exterior and Colton's going to do a full and try and restore some of the paint. Most of the clear coat is gone here, but he's going to do his best. And if he burns through paint here or there, well, it's not going to look any worse than it does now. And so he'll try and restore this back to its former glory. Then of course we'll ceramic coat it and try and protect what's left on the paint for as long as possible. Though those videos will all be on out of spec detailing and the detailing channel is wonderful. If you guys haven't watched very nerd level 9,000 detailing stuff. Uh, and then the interior is the big thing. Colton said he does not want to touch the interior. So we might just call like a mobile detailer and be like, ah, disaster details. We need uh, <laughs> need you to burn this thing. So the interior is the real like, just want to like make sure all the diseases are out of it. So ozone machine, whatever you guys can think of, let us know how we should clean up the interior. Ultimately there's trim panels, there's uh, the, the nav system, or at least the screen needs to be replaced. And so I'll be calling some friends, like I mentioned, that have CODAs, have stockpiles of parts for CODAs uh, to get all of that. I have a lot of the original technical materials on this car from owners and also engineers who worked on this car reached out after seeing the original video and said, hey, I engineered this component on the CODA or I worked in this area. It's been great to talk to all the original team who made this car and they're like, we're so excited to see the enthusiasm about the CODA, get it on YouTube, tell people about this car. And that's exactly what we wanna do. So you'll probably see it at a few car shows in the Colorado area if there's anything you guys want to do let me know and uh with it and you know always open to more stories with any of the cars that we have um to sort of uh you know tell the coda history if you will it's just a cool experience to be able to own and buy a brand new electric coda now my big question is i wonder if i'll get the tax credit <laughs> actually i won't because it's not registered uh with the tax you have the manufacturer has to apply for you to get the tax credits but uh one dollar seventy five hundred dollar tax credit that'd be pretty sweet that'd be pretty cool I, yeah <laughs> but I, it's not it's not a thing <laughs> I, I so <laughs> no it does not <laughs> um but there you go otherwise i wouldn't be giving it to you right you'd be <laughs> <laughs> you would take the car and i would buy it from you <laughs> yes so there you go the coda electric is officially ours we're going to load it up on the trailer uh, behind the Rivian R1T, and uh, we'll do that in this video. Strap it down, and then you'll have to stay tuned to Out of Spec Motoring for the road trip back. And that will come at a later time uh, where we tow this back to Colorado starting today. And uh, man, so much to do with this car. Can't wait. Can't thank DG DG enough. But uh, Nick, you've been epic in this whole thing. Thanks, dude. For sure. And it's For cool sure. to make friends buying cars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And like telling stories. Yep, yep. And uh, you have 800 electric cars in inventory. Uh, I think it's just under 600. Oh, it's under 600. Yeah, so you sold we, a lot. We had 400 when oh, okay. you came the first oh, Okay, so, so the number was 400. Okay. Um, you know, the, the market's changing really quick. Yes. Um, Tesla, you know, whatever Tesla does, everything kind of follows. There's like well, a, there's I like was a saying, effect. Like, you know, Model Y rate lowered $20,000. It, and so it's now it's just ID effect. fours on the lot. Yep. Because ID fours, Ionic fives, like all the, you know, Mach E's, they were all waiting lists. Yeah. And totally. now you can just show up and, and buy one. just buy one. Yeah. Um, so it's really cool. You know? And buy them at sticker, right? Yeah. Yeah. at or below oh wow cool yeah, so hit, sure. hit up dg dg um you know there's still some dealers out there that are that are marking cars up um ev specifically but 
it's a different story here in the Bay Area. So uh, great. Good. Yeah. Well, glad you guys aren't doing that. And yep, uh, yep. you've got cars ready to go. Yeah. Punch of them. You got Hyundai Nexos. <laughs> well, we <laughs> do. We have a lot of Nexos. We're one of the only dealers that can sell those. So. And aren't, weren't uh, you like the number one Bolt dealer? Yeah, we were the number one Bolt dealer uh, in the country, which I believe that puts us in the world as well. Yeah, number so, one Bolt yeah, dealer uh, in the world. Now they're canceling the Bolt. It's such a bummer. I know. I love the Bolt. I was just reading that there's... Mary Barra was saying that they may bring back some sort of equivalent car on their new platform. Okay, well, we know the Equinox will be cheap, but not as cheap yeah. as the Bolt was. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see. But uh, DGDG, hit them up. Just just like, uh, what's the email? What's the phone uh, number? It's just DGDG.com. Okay, and, yeah, cool. We have uh, 19 different locations right now in the Bay Area in Northern California. And uh, yeah, it's great. And everyone here, like super hardcore enthusiasts, understands the electric yep. thing. You got chargers at all the dealers. It's sure. like the very rare dealer experience that you actually want to go and like <laughs> <laughs> buy and a we're car. Just getting started with the EV stuff. I mean, we're yep. going all solar on all of our dealers at some point soon. Oh, cool. Um, you know, EV chargers behind every dealership. EV chargers for employees, like. It's a big deal. Yeah. I mean, we got to be ahead of the curve. So That's awesome. Well, we love to see it. And uh, and you were way ahead of the curve being the Coda retailer. <laughs> yeah, for so, sure. like, you know, I'm all in. I love working with DGDG. Maybe we'll do some more stuff together. For sure. I'm sure We'd we can to. come We'd up with some to. stories. But, uh, yeah, if you find any more abandoned old reared electric cars around, <laughs> let me know. We will. All right. Let's get this loaded up on the back of the Rivian and uh, we'll call it a video. But uh, there you go our new out of spec electric car. Guys, it is time to hook the Coda up to the back of the Rivian. You can see I've brought the trailer out from Colorado because I towed my Nissan Leaf out to, again, Patrick and Liv. Uh, we're gonna load up the Coda and then it gets towed to Colorado. So stay tuned, it'll be a couple weeks away to the road trip home with the Coda. But uh, now let's load it up, see if it can climb the hill. It actually felt pretty powerful, so I don't think power is gonna be an issue here. So let's try it. Coda will live for the next couple thousand miles or so. I'll close the windows. We got to take the jump box off. That goes back to you. I'm not going to leave with that. Now, let me just make sure it's positioned correctly. We sort of want it to probably even a bit more forwards than this. And then, uh, then we'll lock her down. Well, we got her all strapped down and we'll just tidy up some of the excess cables here. We're actually going to leave this here for a couple days because yeah. we're going to EVS 36 in Sacramento. Uh, after that, we'll come over, pick it up, load it up, re-strap, you know, make sure everything's nice and tight and then drive it home. So we honestly just hooked up the trailer so it didn't fall off, but we're actually going to leave it right here. So uh, we're actually going to move it right over there. We're going to move it. Just a couple inches backwards. Yep. But yes, the trailer will stay here at the dealer uh, until uh, after the weekend. And then this comes back to Colorado. So sick. Just absolutely love it. And uh, man. It is one hell of an ugly car, isn't it? Thanks so much for watching another Out of Spec Reviews. Out of Spec now owns a Coda Electric. See you on another one soon. Bye-bye.